So if you are wondering what goes on in a sprint planning meeting, then this video is for you. Hi, I'm Sajna Binil. I'm the founder of Business Analysis Hub, the fastest growing community of business analysts here in India. In our community, we coach business analysts to work collaboratively in a scrum environment. In my last video, I spoke about the backlog refinement meeting and also showed you a demonstration that my students had produced for a refinement meeting. If you have not watched the video yet, click on the link in the description box and watch the video right now. So in this video, I'll give you details about a sprint planning meeting, what goes on in it, and you'll also see a live demonstration of this meeting. So let's get started. So what is a sprint planning meeting? A sprint planning meeting is a meeting where the team determines which backlog items have to be handled the next sprint. So they pick and choose the backlog items that are ready to be taken in the next sprint. Why is this meeting conducted? Well, this meeting helps the team stay focused and work in a very productive way. How? Because every sprint has a sprint goal. So in the sprint planning meeting, the sprint goal is uh, finalized and uh, it gives all team members an opportunity to collaborate freely, leverage each other's skills and work towards the goal in a much more supportive way. So that's the whole purpose of sprint planning. It gives everyone clarity what exactly has to be taken up for that particular sprint and what's the best way to achieve the goal. What's the duration of a sprint planning meeting? Well, I would say this differs from project to project, but ideally uh, two hours per week. So if you have a two week sprint, it will be four hours. Who attends a sprint planning meeting? Sprint planning meeting is attended by the entire scrum team, which includes the product owner, the scrum master, the developers, the testers, the business analyst, the database administrators, the designers. So sprint planning meeting has to be attended by everyone. Now let's discuss agenda. Like I mentioned in all my sessions, that agenda for the meeting ties down the scope of the meeting. So agenda is so very important in every meeting. Sprint planning session also should have a proper agenda. And usually sprint planning meetings are driven by either the tech leads or the scrum masters. But if you as a business analyst are getting an opportunity to drive the sprint planning meeting, just go ahead and take the challenge. So this video will give you complete guidance as to how you can effectively drive a sprint planning meeting because it will tell you the various components that should go into that meeting. So one of the primary goals of your sprint planning meeting should be to establish a proper sprint goal. Ensure that everyone in that meeting room is fully aware and cl has complete clarity about the goal the team should achieve. Okay, do not allow anyone to leave the meeting room unclear about the sprint goal. So sprint goal is the first thing guys which you need to establish in the meeting. Then um, together with the team you can pick and choose the backlog items that should be taken up for the next sprint. So product owner can work jointly with the tech team to identify backlog items which are of high priority and which can be comfortably uh, taken up by the tech team. While you are doing that you might also want to keep a check on the team's capacity and the velocity. Now, what is the team's capacity? The team's capacity is determined by the number of backlog items they can complete during a sprint. And how do you arrive on the capacity? Capacity is simply measured as number of team members multiplied by the number of productive hours. Do not forget to subtract the time spent in meetings and other tasks. That will give you the net capacity of your team. This is a quick and simple formula to determine the team's capacity so that the team does not end up picking up more items than it can actually chew. Now velocity, you'll come across uh, this term also in the Scrum framework. What is velocity and what differentiates it from a uh, team's capacity? Well, if team capacity is the number of items that the team can complete during a sprint, velocity is the rate at which the team can deliver. It's the speed at which the team can deliver. Your team will always have a mixture of very experienced people and some junior developers. So each one of them will have their own uh, speed at which they can deliver stuff. However, velocity can be computed only after your team completes uh, three to five sprints. So if you your project is, is at a very initial stage, if it's your 
uh, first sprint uh, you will ideally not be able to compute the velocity of the team you will see the first three sprints you will see a fluctuation in the velocity the team uh, is not uh, performing in a stabilized way but you, after the third fourth sprint you will see a common pattern that's when you can determine the velocity also in a sprint planning meeting the team should consider the sprint retro points so you have a retrospective meeting every sprint to figure out what are the action items what are the improvement areas right so these improvement areas should also be discussed in the um, sprint planning meeting so that the team um, gets clarity that some new processes some new practices have to be followed in the next sprint estimation now we come to the most crucial component of a sprint planning meeting which is estimation now majority of the time in a sprint planning meeting is consumed by estimation so 80% of your time will be consumed in estimating the user stories also in some organizations i have seen if the scrum team is relatively new to the scrum framework and is not aware of how to do story point estimation what they do is they assign story points to the number of hours of effort involved so they create a matrix where the team can comfortably map one story point equal to 4 hours of effort or 6 hours of effort uh, two story points is equal to 8 hours of effort and they create a matrix for the entire team and they follow the matrix when they do estimation of these user stories so uh, these are the key points that should be um, handled in a sprint planning meeting so when it comes to estimation there are various methods in which you can do estimation there is planning poker method there is t-shirt size estimation uh, you can pick and choose which estimation technique your team is more comfortable with and establish that as a routine so like i said majority of the time in uh, sprint planning meetings consumed by estimation and ensure that estimation of all the user stories uh, that have been prioritized and that have to be taken up for the next sprint is complete. So in this video, we have covered all the intricacies of a sprint planning meeting. You will just see a live demonstration of a sprint planning meeting where my students are using the planning poker method to do estimation of some user stories. This demonstration will give you a complete view of how estimation is done in a real live scrum project so this is the guide that we can uh, or the reference point we can uh, take up for estimating our user stories for uh, you know what we've done is what uh, one user story point is equal to eight hours right so if in case you think that okay you guys need more time to work on the user story which will exceed eight hours it will go as two user story points Similarly, in case you feel that, okay, okay, this uh, user story point will take more than 16 hours to be developed, test and be ready. You know, you can estimate it at, at uh, three user story points. So like I so mentioned, you know, just one question from that. So yes, three user story points does not mean three user stories. Basically for one user story, I'm taking time of three user stories, right? Absolutely. That's correct. So what we are estimating is, you know, for any work they're doing, if you're working on a user story and if you feel that okay the user story is equal to eight hours it will be one user story point similarly if the same user story if you think you will take 16 hours to develop develop it will be two user story points and similarly for the third one you're correct Got it. thank you perfect great any other questions please what was this question yes please Anna. No, Srinivas, you said the question. I didn't get you. Can you please? Okay, so what, what I was asking is we are estimating for single user story. So this three user story point does not mean three user stories estimation. Basically, we are estimating for one single user story, which is equal to the three user for, uh, user story points or equal number of hours. So user story so, points is equal to the, uh, you know, the uh, effort that is needed to develop the story point okay is there any maximum <laughs> limit on that no it can continue but then uh you know uh, it can be for four user story points as well five user story points as well for now as we know that we are we only have one user story which uh you know which is not that huge that is why i've taken a reference of three user story points but then yeah there is no limit for that okay My however is... we have to be very mindful that it cannot exceed uh the uh, the hours of work that we are looking at in the current sprint so maybe 160 hours so in case anything that if you feel that okay is going to exceed the 
two weeks of time or the sprint timelines, then that goes into the next sprint. Okay, my question is based on the um, questions that we raised yesterday. You know, we had about nine user stories. Mm -hmm. So, are you saying that for each one is eight hours? So, if that particular one is going to be more than eight hours, then that means um, that, does that mean that that okay? Let's say, for example, now let's say the number nine user story let's say that one is like it will take 24 hours to achieve i'm just giving a, a, an example so that means that one will be three user story points is that what you're saying right so uh, uh abiola let me correct you there so yesterday we discussed one story point and that one story uh, user story i'm sorry one user story and that one user story had multiple tabs within the same screen. So we discussed only one screen, right? And now what we have to estimate is the features that we uh, need to build into that one user story, how much time it will take for each of us to develop that. Okay. Right. So the features, so it was one feature into that one feature. There were multiple, uh, you know, uh, sub levels that we need to uh, develop. We have Mawson showing two. We have Abiola showing one. Srisha. Srisha showing three. How about Saranya? Saranya nine. says nine. Okay, perfect. All right. And we have Srinivas showing three. So I, I think, you know, uh, the, the user story points that are discussed, you know, there's a lot of uh, variance in between the points. So uh, uh, I uh, let me first uh, start by checking if everybody of us are on the same page and if we have clarity or if you need any clarity uh, before we start estimating the, uh, the number because I, uh, as a team, we should be close to each other. Uh, we cannot have nine and one as a estimate for the same user story. So we will first start with uh, Srinivas maybe, uh, you know, to try and understand, you know, why he feels it can be uh, developed within three user story points. So uh, means uh, within three, there is like 24 hours, right? Uh -huh. so I think uh, we are, uh, we should be able to develop this in, in within three uh, user story points that is 24 hours because uh, we have developed a similar item before which has took uh, approximately similar time so I think this is a correct estimate as per uh, my understanding okay perfect thank you so much how about Prashant Prashant you mentioned eight story points yeah Pranay, uh, yeah Pranay. eight story points is to you know uh, to create a script uh, there are multiple tabs for this uh, uh, what to say for this application? So mm -hmm. we have to maintain a front end as well as the back end also. For back end, we have to upload the data, just like the wage, non wage, the number, the food items, and the prices. Everything we have to maintain at the back end level. So it will take uh, around the two, uh, two to three days. So and the rest of the time is the front end. So where the user will actually interact with the front end. So it should be very, uh, you know, which, uh, the GI should be more uh, uh, presentable. So I think uh, it is the right estimation for that. Other okay. than this, we, for the development also, we have to prepare some release notes and something to the client to, you know, for the uh, for the references. So okay. I have completed all the, I have taken all the things in a view and then I do the these stories. Okay. So uh, the old... Okay. And uh, while we are teaming up you know, with Srinivas and as we know that Srinivas has a reference point due to which he feels that, okay, sharing those reference points can actually lower down the estimate. Do you think that is a solution or would you still stick to eight user points? No, because what I'm thinking, she, uh, in this food uh, ordering uh, these applications, the main is the your GUI system, the front end, where the user who will be uh, uh, who's not much aware of this uh, system also, he can just order. So it should be more interactive and be uh, more presentable. So I think that GUI we required a much time, and the same time uh, we have required the, for the backend also, where we have to upload all the data and you know whatever data will be applicable for the once the user will be uh, selected from the menu options it should be available in your database as well so i think both the things it will take a uh, eight days okay let let me uh, let us check with the others as well thank you so much for inputs Prashant. Uh, how about saranya uh, saranya i guess you are on mute 
the database they have to create separate table for the each and every page like a home page a separate table and the sub option and everything so definitely for the database it depends on the team if the, there are two database developers they can do within a two days it depends on the team estimation so i hope it will take minimum 3 days for database for all the tables for creating everything and front end for Uh, some developer they doing front end some developer they can do the back end so mm -hmm. they using java script and php the different developer so i hope the each and every task totally it will take 8 to 9 days for okay. completed properly yeah so if you like this video hit the notification bell and subscribe to our channel and keep watching more videos on business analysis and scrum thank you very much